Hi, I'm Gene Cavassis. A while back, I put a Bluetooth speaker into a plastic ammo box. Very simple, fun project. Well, now I'm going to steampunk it, so stay tuned. Using a plastic ammo box I picked up from Northern Tool and Equipment, I'm going to draw the holes for the speakers that will fit into this. Now, I'm going to use a box cutter to cut the holes, and this worked just fine. Once I have the coals cut, I'm going to remove the lid. It just pops off. And I'm going to use some aluminum siding that I'd picked up for another project. This copper colored is some aluminum that I pre-painted and it's going to work just fine. I'll go ahead and use the inside and trace the holes that I just cut out. And then just using regular aviation snips, I will cut the holes out of there. Now I'm going to just trace around a straight line and create where I'm going to want to put some basic rivet divots. And using a nail punch, I'm going to just lightly tap to create those rivets. Marking where these go, I'm now going to use some Starbond. Now Starbond is a great, it's like super glue on steroids. I'll put a link down below to this product. After you've applied your glue, you come on and spray the accelerator on there and it really helps to make a fast, quick bond. Now I'm going to use clamps to secure this down and make sure that it all holds but actually this thing's ready to go within minutes. I'm gonna keep adding some pieces to this like corner pieces with the rivets and just kinda of keep building and wrapping around this. I'm going to trim out where those flanges at the top of it are and continue tapping in the, the rivets and using the star bond. And like I say, the accelerator really helps move this product along. It, it sets everything up very quickly. You could use other kinds of glue and that's fine, but I just like the Star Bond because it's a good product and it adheres very fast. Which by the way, I'm using the medium thick. So you're just kind of building a random style of, of assembling the metal and fully wrapping the entire box. Now this metal or aluminum is thin enough you can bend it by hand and get kind of a soft roll with it. And this works really good for these corners because they have a soft curve to them. I really went about this with no direction of how I wanted to do it. I just kind of cut random pieces and now I'm going to cut a piece that's going to fit on the top of the, the lid 
I'm gonna cut this down. And what I'm gonna basically make out of this is a piece that will help hold a cell phone so that it'll make it easy to to play any of the music on the box and hold the phone at the same time. Now that I've got the basic box completely wrapped, I'm going to come back with this and I'm going to use a orbital sander and I'm going to start smoothing everything out. I don't want any sharp edges or anything. And like I say, don't worry about the copper color. That just happened to be the color of the material I was using. Now I picked up a bag of gears on Amazon and I'll put a link down below for where you can get these. These are cheap and they're all metal and a variety. It was fun. I had so many different ones to choose from and just started kind of laying these out as I go and building kind of a gear pattern. kind of setting these around until you find the perfect combination and the same Starbond glue works great for this as well. I'm really pretty happy with how that all went down. I'm going to use some two times uh, primer and paint using a flat black and spraying this onto the box. This is going to dry to a nice matte finish and just giving it a light dusting. This is like I was saying, don't worry about the color that I was using because that has nothing to do with this. After you've sprayed everything, including the lid, you're going to be ready to move to the next part, which will be painting your basic colors on. Now, I'm going to use some silver acrylic along with several other colors and just start basically dry brushing my colors on. Now when I started this, I'm starting to think this is not how I wanted that to go. And I was starting to think, oh my word, this is a hot mess. And how am I going to pull this out? I'm, I'm starting to really worry about that, but I'm going to keep adding some colors and working through this. Now I'm going to use kind of a bronze tone. So I start working this color through there, but you got to realize I don't really think you can screw this up. Just keep working your paints and dry brushing them out and working this. Now I know that looks really kind of strange right now, but it will actually flow out and kind of give a cool look to it. Okay, I'm starting to see a little bit of an end result that I'm starting to like. It has a little bit of rust and copper fill to it. Hitting a lot of the high points with this, things like the rivets, the gears, it's starting to look aged and have that steampunk feel that I really like. It's 
So one part of the final piece that I want to do is to take some of kind of a teal color to give it that look of oxidation. You know, the rust that starts coming from it. Now, I'm going to use a smoke glaze from the same Rust-Oleum product line, and I'm going to spray this on. This is kind of a transparent color, and you can take a rag and just kind of daub it off or smear it off, but it starts filling in some of those darker crevices and cracks, and I'm starting to really like how that's setting in, especially on the front side with the gears it fills in a lot of the dark pieces and just as you start to I don't know daub it off I'm really liking how this is looking okay now that I've got that pretty well done and dried I'm liking how that looks I'm gonna put a clear coat of the two times same rust-oleum and it's important that you use the same product. I've used, made the mistake of using two different products and it causes it to either alligator or create something that you're not going to be happy with. All these paints work together and are, can, you know, clear coat and everything worked through and sealed up really, really nicely. great thing about the clear coat it just seals everything and puts a nice uh, gloss finish to it I'm gonna set the speakers down in here just to get the basic make sure that the hole is correct and everything fits I'm not gonna click it in yet but I want to get an idea how it fits now I'm gonna take some eighth inch copper rod and start bending this up to make it fit over the grill. I picked some of this up and it's very inexpensive and I'll put a link down below. So basically I'm going to bend up four of these in the exact same shape and size. Marking how I want them to fit, I'll remove the speaker. And then using a speed square, I'm going to mark how I want these set in. I'm going to use a plastic wall anchor to lock down into these and that'll help hold the 8th inch brass tubing. I'm going to touch them up a little bit. And now I'm going to go ahead and set the speaker into place. Make sure it looks straight. I'm thinking that looked pretty cool. Might as well go ahead and set the uh, control panel in there as well. Now I'm going to fit the, the brass rods that I bent up and just push them down into those wall anchors. It really helps lock them in. It 
Make sure you level them right. That's gonna work. That's pretty cool. Now I'm going to come back, do a little final touch up on these. A little clean up after. And I think that's going to work. Now, hooking this up is as simple as red to red. And they just snap directly in. And then of course white to the white. Set the top back on. Now I'm pretty happy with this. Let's go ahead and test it out. Consider watching some of these other videos on steampunking, and in the meantime, I'll see you soon.